Hello, hello. I have bought myself an early Christmas present, and that is the Thrustmaster TCA Captain Pack Air Airbus Edition for the Xbox Series X. Um, this has existed for the PC for over a year, uh, but it's not been compatible with the Series X because there you've been limited to the Thrustmaster um, Hotas 1, I believe. Uh, that's been the only joystick that's been compatible with the Series X and I've not wanted to buy that one because apparently the thrust uh, paddle can get a little bit floppy and the quality of it is not that great. Um, so I'm super pleased that this is finally here and especially the color, I love the blue color. And you see, super official, Xbox, designed for Xbox, also includes uh, Game Pass as well. And this is quite a big deal um, because it's also a setup that can potentially be used on the couch. It's not like the the uh, Boeing yoke and also the Turtle Beach one, which can only be used um, by a desk. And here are all the other accessories that you can buy uh, for it as well. There are the rudder pedals and also some slightly more expensive ones. And uh, yeah, this is it. So I'm not going to do a traditional unboxing video because there will be plenty of them out there. So I'm just going to go through some of the basics. So quality is really, really good. Absolutely good. It's plastic, but it feels solid enough. It doesn't feel like a cheap Fisher Price type product. So a quick run through the, the joystick. As you can see, the Xbox One has colored buttons A, B, X, and Y, which you don't get on the PC edition. It also has these buttons for screenshots, and the joystick can be used either left or right-handed. You also get a spare of these that you can swap around as well. And there's a, a trigger button there, and then there's a secondary button there too. And here you can see, um, all the Xbox Ones have an Xbox button. So if you're buying a used one for the Xbox, make sure it's got an X, because if it doesn't have an X, you've bought the PC version and it will not work. Uh, and there you have the menu button, and down there you have USB. So the USB um, C port, that's the one that you plug one cable into, and then the USB A into the Xbox. And there is also a toggle switch. So this works for both Xbox and PC. There's a headphone jack. Um, I've tried it and it does work. And then you have the quadrant, uh, which has speed brake, throttle, uh, not thrust, <laughs> uh, for engine one and engine two, and flaps as well. And then uh, you have the landing gear switch there, and auto brake, and parking brake as well. And I think these are autopilot buttons and obviously these can be mapped in it in any way that you like and also similarly there are blank buttons there that you can map and um yeah and if you're flying in you know like an aircraft with four engines you can actually buy another one of these and slot it in there and then you have four thrust levers and then at the bottom you have various things going on here for detaching all the different pieces. And also, if you buy this, don't forget to connect these uh, cables there, because if you don't, then these units on the side will not work. So please don't forget to plug these in. And uh, yeah, it's beautifully blue. Love it. And Interesting that this TCA Captain's Pack was only announced for the Xbox the beginning of November, which was roughly two weeks ago, but I only found out about it three days ago. And my head was telling me, hey, don't buy it just yet. Wait a couple of weeks and it'll come down in price and maybe there might be a Christmas promotion or Black Friday promotion. But then I had a look online and saw that stock was pretty much non-existent everywhere, even though there were listings or I said that delivery can be expected between two to three weeks and obviously with winter and cold weather biting i told myself hey let me just buy this play now rather than trying to save 20 or 
30 pounds but not being able to play this for the next six weeks or so because i think stock will probably still be a bit short and the website that i ordered it from as soon as i took delivery they showed no stock so i think they might have only received one or two of these so i expect that some stores out there have minimal stock so if you want one of these over christmas then i would suggest that you place an order right now uh, because yeah stock might be very short to come by and it also comes with this useful pamphlet with some mappings that are already pre-programmed you can see the pc mapping and the xbox mapping as well and this is a really big deal because it's not just a joystick that's compatible with the xbox but it, it's been tested for flight simulator and all the mapping has already been done not just for airbus vehicles but also for other aircraft as well so you know that when you plug this in it's going to work and you're not going to have to spend hours trying to figure out all the bindings or look up youtube clips of how people have spent 40 minutes binding the buttons with the controls and um, here again you have a bit more information like basic information about rather side stick throttle as well um, and again here highlighting a few additional accessories and how to plug them in and it's all very exciting and also as i said earlier you also get a uh, one month of xbox uh, game pass ultimate as well i'm not going to show you my code because i haven't used it yet <laughs> welcome to my seating position i am a casual flight simulator player and therefore i play the game mostly on the couch sitting up here uh, but in this case i'll be using the thrustmaster tca mainly sitting on the floor and one of the reasons is because there's a flat surface for the joystick and then there is a kind of l-shaped chase for the thrust quadrant and also to the right of it i have a mouse then i also have the controller in case i want to use that and if we look at the screen um you can see that the xbox detects the tca side stick x co-pilot however this is a captain's edition so i was a bit nervous when it said co-pilot but if we scroll and click there we can see a picture of the joystick uh one thing that i dislike is that um the axis and all the buttons are not labeled on here because i believe that if you play flight simulator on the pc they're all labeled so therefore if you want to change the mapping you kind of can see which button corresponds to which because in this case it says button 30 34 and 12 but if you look at the joystick like you wouldn't have any idea um which number of button corresponds to which button but what's really cool is that you can have the controller a mouse keyboard and the side stick all connected at the same time and while playing you can also hot swap between all of them seamlessly which is really good um because it could have gone the other way whereby if you connect the side stick it disconnects the controller for example but that is not the case and um yeah and obviously one of the benefits of this being uh not just a xbox accessory but an accessory designed for flight simulator um means that all the mapping has been done for you when I plugged it in, it recognized, it was basically recognized by the Xbox right away and I haven't had to do any mapping at all. I have been playing Flight Sim on the Xbox since August last year and I've been mainly using the controller. Actually, I've only used the controller and it's only since I got the side stick and the throttle quadrant yesterday that I've started to even use the mouse. So. As you can imagine, there is a lot more going on now compared with just holding this in your hand, which was really easy. Um, so there's been a bit of a learning curve, but I've played with this now for about an hour or two and I'm already getting used to it. And um, 
so a lot of you are probably going to wonder what's working what's not working and first of all the stick works really well and it's super sensitive like even if i tap on it you can see the corresponding movement on the screen so it's very very precise at least <laughs> relatively to what i expected and then we can see the rudders it works as well and here you have the throttle quadrant so there you go it works fine and the landing gear selector or lever and then here is the what is it called again is it auto brakes ah speed brake um and then let's see if the flap works they absolutely worked um and one thing you should probably know is that when you start the game and let's say you're starting with the throttle at their max position that's not pre-selected um it's not pre-selected in the sense that if you start on the runway and start the game with the throttles on max the plane isn't just going to take off it's still going to stay in the kind of idle position until you start to move this so you don't need to be nervous about for example um starting in the air and then seeing that the uh, uh, landing gear is down like it's not going to come down right away so that's really cleverly done in the sense that you don't need to be nervous about the positions that these are in before you jump into a game um, but overall i'm really enjoying having the mouse as well like the mouse precision is absolutely amazing really really good so much easier to move around the cockpit um compared with using the controller and also the benefit of having the mouse here is that i can keep my left hand on the joystick control the plane while panning around the cockpit uh, which is not really that easy to do if you're holding um a controller and i would also like to flag that um, i might be inside an airbus right now but i've tried the side stick um, inside, um, I think, a Boeing as well. And all of these control works in planes that have them. And obviously, if a plane does not have a speed brake, then obviously that won't really do anything. Uh, but it's really glorious and it's really satisfying to, to you know, engage reverse thrust as well. So, yeah, as you can see here, it's just clicks and it's very tactile and... Uh, yeah, overall, I'm really pleased with it and look forward to playing a lot more over the next couple of weeks, especially going into winter. So without further ado, let's take off. So first, let me in add some thrust and then disengage parking brake. Apply some flaps. You can see the plane is now moving. Here we go. And let's put my hand on the stick. And are we ready for lift off? Yep, there we go. Lifting off. And with ease, I can pull it back to 75% throttle, really easy, easily or there. And then I pull the flaps up. As you can see, I'm flying. So let's do the outside view. And where you do feel the benefit of this whole setup is pretty much when you're flying the big airliners because when you land at the big airliners you sometimes have to use speed brake you have to use flaps and just toggle between them oh look at the landing gear let's get it up there you go landing gear up so yeah getting back to these big airliners like being able to control the speed brakes flap and throttle here makes landing a lot more precise 
much, much more precise. So here, for example, you can see the speed is a bit too high. So let's get down a little bit to about 65. And then if you want to slow the plane down further, add a bit of speed brakes, a bit of flaps, and you can see the speed starts to come down. And in the past, when I was using the controller, it was very difficult to engage in disengage speed brakes because that had to be done inside the cockpit. And if you're getting near the runway and you need to kind of maneuver the plane and adjust maybe the throttle a little bit, having to faff around with the speed brake inside the cockpit just made the whole experience feel like really, really rushed. So as you can see here, my speed is just coming down gradually. Oh, I can see an airstrip ahead of me. I didn't actually intend to land there, but let's try to land there anyway. I'm not a pro by the way, but let's uh, just see this whole setup in action. Oops, accidentally touched the rudder. So now you can see the speed is 164. Altitude coming down nicely probably carrying a little bit too much speed to land there because it's a tiny runway. Let's add a bit more speed brake. A bit more. Don't think we're gonna make it. Add a bit more flaps, go down to idle. Oh, landing gear. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. Oh jeez, let's try. Oh, let's try. Ah, oh, I kind of landed. Air strip. There we go. So, what's my verdict then? Should you buy this setup or should you not? If you are serious about flying, then you should obviously consider this. There are people out there who have much more advanced sim setups for a pc etc but if you want to play casually on the couch this is very playable you don't need a desk in order to play this as you've seen me i've played this sitting on the floor and also for some games if i just want to use the joystick then i can do so without using this quadrant the fit and finish is very satisfying and the degree of motion is so much better than on the controller and also when you're flying even moving it a couple of millimeters will change your speed and also the same applies to speed brakes as well um all of these all of these switch gear feel really really good uh, but if you're a beginner who's never played flight simulator then i recommend just using the controller use the controller to learn the basic operations of an aircraft. So unlike racing games, flying a plane is all about, a lot more about preparation, setting the right parameters rather than pointing and squirting. Therefore, you can play this game with a controller. There'll be a bit of a learning curve, uh, but it's much better than rushing out and buying this setup for um, just over half the cost of an Xbox Series X. However, although the controller is great, this is so rewarding to use. Like, degree of control is amazing and being able to steer with your whole hand and arm and shoulder makes flying a lot more stable than using your thumb where you potentially risk uh, making jerky movements that make the plane, like, uh, uh, dive or... Um, or like fly off to the left or right like too quickly and then also landing this makes landing an absolute joy so i would probably not buy this on its own without the throttle quadrant because you can use this but it's a bit more fiddly and your left hand will be in the way but with this it allows you to control the thrust and speed brakes and flap like all of which are tools to enable you to make a controlled descent. And making a controlled descent is the difference between a perfect landing and a poor landing. So therefore, if you wanna perfect your landings, you really need this, absolutely need this. 
And um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment sections. This is just like a quick um, first impression after having played with this for about two hours. Thank you.